Dive bombers of the 1930s and 40s used the plane itself to aim the bomb. Simple, but devastating. One plane, one bomb, deadly accurate. It's really hard to aim a little bomb at a tiny little ship thousands of feet below. So the US Navy develops a technique called dive bombing. They did what was called the dive bombing study. And they discovered that if you aim a plane with a bomb on it at the ship and you dive down on the ship and then you let go of the bomb, the bomb continues on the same path and it hits the ship, blows it up and sinks it. Their technique was to use the plane as part of the bomb aiming system. They entered an incredibly steep dive released the bombs very precisely, and then pulled up, hopefully, before they blacked out. But this report wasn't kept secret for long. Germany obtained copies, and legendary designer Hugo Junkers began development on the ultimate dive bomber. The Junkers 87, better known as the Stuka. The German Luftwaffe, when it is reconstructed in the early 1930s, They've got the dive bombing study on the table in front of them. And good old Junkers has been building a dive bomber, the Stuka, which is an aircraft optimized for dropping a big fat bomb on a little target far below. And if that little target's a tank, bang, you lose the tank. The dive bomber had an impact far beyond the physical damage that it could inflict. It truly was a terror weapon. Even the sound of its approach was capable of striking fear into the hearts of the enemy. The Germans built upon this with the Schuka by fitting it with sirens so that during the dive, the already distinctive noise of the aircraft as it approached the earth was enhanced by the shrieking wail. It was quite clearly effective as, as a psychological tool. High altitude bombing was more hit and miss. British studies in 1941 found that only one in nine planes dropped their bombs even five miles from the target. So the RAF bombed entire cities by night. But the US Army Air Force developed precision aiming for the bombing of specific military and industrial targets. For this, they needed a tool with which to find their targets. Carl Norton's bomb site was designed to be that tool. Carl Norden was a, a Dutchman who, in the early 20th century, starts to work in the United States. And what Norden builds is a computer made with wheels and gears and moving parts, an analog computer. This is the uh, Norden bombsite. This was the standard high altitude precision bombsite used by the US during the Second World War. Some of the factors he could compute was the aircraft's speed, its altitude, the wind speed, and the wind direction. The claims made about the accuracy of the Norden bombsite remain controversial. The initial claim for the Norden bombsite was that it could hit a pickle barrel from 20,000 feet. The reality was it could probably place its bomb within a 100-foot circle from 20,000 feet. That was still pretty good. So as a result, the Americans, like the British, have to drop large bomb loads on big targets like cities in order to have a chance of hitting anything. But at the time, the Norden was seen as a war-winning weapon. It was fitted in all the US heavy bombers from the B-17 and B-24 to the B-29 that dropped the nuclear bomb on Japan. The Norden bombsite wasn't the only way that the Air Force tried to guide their bombs onto their target. Project Aphrodite was to be the ultimate precision bomber raid. Unmanned B-17s packed with 20,000 pounds of high explosives were flown by remote control into German U-boat pens. Unfortunately, the guidance was just too difficult, so it wasn't possible to make unmanned aerial vehicles out of these World War II bombers. The technology just wasn't there. The Aphrodite project wasn't a success. Joseph P. Kennedy, brother of future President JFK, was killed when his deadly cargo that he was flying was detonated before he had time to bail out. 
Norden and Aphrodite still hadn't ensured the destruction of critical targets. Studies into the bombing campaign after the war prompted a change in thinking. Massive resources had gone into Allied strategic bombing, but precision targeting had proved ineffective.